After nearly two decades of designs, York Mays is set to unveil its latest project, and this time it's set to be the biggest of its kind in the world. So today we are launching York Mays 2019, which actually this year we are celebrating the 25th anniversary of the Lion King movie. Hence, I am Rafiki, the shaman of the rock with uh, my little friend Simba here as well. Well, it's a bit like the Lion King movie. It's the crop circle of life, isn't it? <laughs> every year we get to, to, to do it all again, so nothing gets boring. You know, we create a new maze every year, a new theme every year. This year's design features four of the main ah! characters from the Disney classic. Uh, there's a lot of planning. It takes quite a while to get it all sorted to make sure that it looks like an amazing picture because every year we want everyone to sort of look at the aerial photo and go, wow. Uh, and then when you're in there, you really no concept of what it is you're walking around so this year when you get out into the field once we get above it you'll see in the center of the maze is a giant lion so it's basically uh, Mufusa or Simba it's just a giant lion in the middle we've got a mandrill that's me uh, at one side of the lion Pumba the warthog at the other side of the lion and then in the very far corner of the field there's a little meerkat popping his head up so it's kind of the you know, the big the big characters out of the movie uh, are carved into the field in tribute to the great film the mighty Zulu nation were on hand to create the Lion King atmosphere. Uh, today we've been uh, doing a performance, uh, sort of we were doing um, Mbobe, which, is, which means Ipubesi, the lion, and we were doing the song. It's a South African song, but it was made famous by um, an American, uh, Lion Sleeps Tonight. Um, so we were doing that song today, just performing and taking pictures. Ndozi is one performer who wants to help promote cultural awareness at the maze. It's good to experience, you know, other people's culture. And as you know that um, South Africa, Zulus and the English, you know, they've got the rich um, history uh, between them. So it's nice to just share, you know, and just uh, entertain people and teach them about our culture as well. After nearly 20 years of making mazes, has the task of building them gotten any easier? Uh, the actual drawing of it takes a lot longer, you know, to create on paper than it does in reality. So it takes weeks to get it all to sort of look right and work right. So we've been doing it for a few years now. So I know sort of how to make the paths and where to make them go to keep people in there just the right am amount of time. Uh, but, you know, putting it into the field normally takes about a week of sort of driving around with tractors and satellite navigation machines and things. So it's quite a technical job, but I think we've just about got the hang of it now after however many years you said it is. So. And it's possible that next year's maze could be decided by a member of the public. Uh, well, that's interesting, isn't it? Yeah, we, we could maybe do that. We could do a, a bit of a straw poll and let them suggest. But, uh, yeah, the problem doing that, you know, it's not just about a great idea. It has to be something that I can turn into a maze. And we've, you know, we've looked at some themes before and thought, oh, that's the thing we're going to do. But actually, it's got to be something that can be turned into a maze. So, you know, some images work, some don't. So we could put it out there. I mean, we're always open to with this year's maze opening to the public soon, next year it could be a bit different, with the public deciding the next amazing design. Kit Saylor, That's TV.